What's good, Greatness Gang? Welcome back to another reaction. And today I have a very special reaction from a gentleman by the name of Johnny Manziel. So, I don't have a clue who this guy is. I just heard his name a lot over the last couple of years. I think his nickname is Johnny Football. Am I right? But uh, I finally was like, let me figure out who is this person that they're talking about. So... We're going to be checking out a video titled, How Bad Was Johnny Manziel Actually? Hmm. I didn't want to jump straight into a highlight video of him. So I wanted to get to know a little bit about him first. So I'm coming in here blind. Hopefully I leave educated at the end of this. And we will find out who is Johnny Manziel. If you watched football in 2012, you know all about Johnny Manziel. He became a legend in less than one season, the freshman QB that beat Bama. And if you watched him, you formed an opinion on it. Everybody had an opinion. Manziel was one of the most polarizing college athletes we've seen. Texas a and arrogant, and incomparable on the field. How did it all fall apart? How bad was Johnny Manziel actually? Before he was Money Manziel, Johnny was raised in Kerrville, right outside of San Antonio, Texas. Like every Texas town, high school football was king. Johnny played three full varsity seasons at quarterback, where his fame rose to folk hero, helping small Tibby High School compete against larger powerhouse schools. By the end of his- I always say one regret that I had, I wish I would've played uh, football in middle school or high school, because I'm surprisingly fast. I feel like I would have made a great free safety or kick returner. His high school career, he racked up 75 touchdown passes, 78 running touchdowns, and even caught five more touchdowns. He was Mr. Texas, AP Texas Player of the Year, All-American. You name it, he won it. Despite wanting so badly to be a Texas Longhorn, that's about the only offer he didn't get. Under six foot, Manziel felt his height kept him from five-star ratings and an offer from his dream school. It fueled his play style and his fiery personality. Despite originally committing to Chip Kelly and the Oregon Ducks with their hyperspeed offense, Texas A&M QB coach Tom Rossley convinced him to flip and play for his childhood team's rival. Johnny Football was headed to College Station. As Johnny a freshman, football. Johnny would redshirt. Before he ever played it down, Manziel would have his first run-in with off-field contract Controversy. Benzel was cited with three misdemeanor charges right before fall camp. The story goes that Johnny and a friend were out late when his buddy threw a racial slur at a guy. While trying to keep the peace between the two, the man swung on Manziel, who retaliated. An officer pulled up to the altercation, and when asked to give identification, Johnny gave the cop a fake Louisiana ID. Safe to say he didn't fall for it, throwing Johnny in jail for the night and charging him with disorderly conduct and two identification charges. The hmm. first of many run-ins didn't scare off Texas A&M, though. No less than two weeks later, he was named the Aggie starter. That surprised the national media, but what came next captivated them. From his first start on Kyle Field, you couldn't take your eyes off the Aggies. He was a walking top 10 highlight. On the field, he was King Midas. Everything Money Manziel touched or threw turned to gold. As a freshman, Manziel was doing the unthinkable. Against Arkansas, Johnny Football tore He's a scrambler too. for 557 yards of total offense. The detonation of offense broke a 43-year-old record. Then he did it again, oh, wow. 576 yards. The new record only stood for two weeks, slightly less time than 43 years. Johnny Football is still the only SEC player with multiple 500 plus yard games in a season. Spoiler, the next moment is the climax of Johnny Manziel's football career. Texas A&M walked into Tuscaloosa to face the biggest, baddest SEC bully of them all, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Just like Goliath fell, so would the Tide. Behind Johnny Manziel's slingshot and the game of a lifetime, Texas A&M toppled Alabama. Manziel finished his legendary season, the first freshman to throw for 3,000 yards and oh, wow. 1,000 more. He broke the freshman wow. offensive record and even set the three highest offensive outputs in SEC history. Every college award went to Johnny Manziel in 2012. The Manning, the O'Brien, and yes, even the Heisman Trophy. 
It had never been given to a freshman before Manziel. The hype for Johnny Football reached fever levels. So did the pressure, the expectations, and the limelight. Manziel had a hard time adjusting to fame. Cameos with Drake, music videos, throwing out first pitches. The guy was everywhere. I'm doing the things I've always Snickers done. Snickers deal? It's just really wow. different when you're being watched Pause. so closely. Straight from Manziel's mouth. The controversies came in bunches. He attended the Manning Passing Academy, a collection of the most elite amateur passers in the world, only to be sent home after oversleeping. But he had time to what make the posts at the haters on winning in the casino. As if that wasn't enough, he did something that threatened his eligibility. Manziel was accused of signing autographs for a five-figure flat fee. It became the talk of the football world. Johnny's parents went on ESPN and told reporters they were incredibly worried about their son, his future, and even his well-being. Manziel would get a slap on the wrist, a half-game suspension against a weak opponent. It was clear 2013 would be his last year in college. Following the season, Manziel declared for the draft, red flags and all. Just like in college, Manziel became the most high-profile, polarizing figure in the draft. Some pundits said Manziel was undraftable. Others felt he was a budding megastar. During the draft, as he slid down into the first round, Manziel texted the Browns' QB coach, I want to wreck this league together. He asked the Browns to trade up for him, and they did. So let's answer the question once and for all. How bad was Johnny Manziel actually? To be honest, who asked to go to the Cleveland Browns? Partying lifestyle, drug and alcohol Yuck. addiction, horrible decision making off the field. It overshadowed anything he might have accomplished. The issues of It's just so crazy how some guys just don't get it. You have the whole world in your hands. Life changing opportunities. And you just turn your attention right here briefly for a second to the wrong things and everything just starts plummeting of his life were too far along once he hit the pros, and money sure didn't make things better. He was late to early rookie meetings. He got fined in one of his first on-field chances, flipping the bird to the Washington bench. He didn't get any playing time in the first three months of his rookie season. Johnny used that time to get into more trouble, including another physical altercation at a club. He rubbed teammates the wrong way with his immaturity. Johnny Manziel's debut start came against the Cincinnati Bengals in Week 15. And, uh, oh boy, he should have been using that time to prepare. To say it was bad is an understatement. Manziel's performance was nothing short of comical. He completed 10 out of 18 passes for a sad 80 yards and two head-scratching interceptions. The 27.3 passer rating is the third worst debut ever. We see wow. Brandon Whedon and Nate Peterman. The dark side of Johnny swung itself again. He was placed on the IR for the final game of the season. Instead of showing up for treatments, Manziel threw a huge party and ducked his job. Browns officials had to go and find Manziel the day of the game to retrieve him. Manziel had an issue, and he loved the fame, to come to the fortune instead of grinding harder. But Manziel was trying to figure it out, as he admitted himself into a 10-week rehab during the offseason. It would come out later that this is when Manziel was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. 2015 mm. was just oh, as rocky. Wow. He rode the pine on the field, a third stringer. Coach Patin named Manziel the starter two days before a game late in the year, just for Manziel to make him look like a fool again. Video surfaced of Johnny partying the night before the game, and the Browns demoted him to third string again. It was clear the seriousness of where he was headed. Tell us if you've heard this story. In the final week of the 2015 season, Manziel sat on the injured reserve. Instead of being in Pittsburgh for concussion treatment, Manziel was in Las Vegas. Manziel moved from disappointment to tragedy, his dangerous behavior harming himself and others. He reportedly struck his now ex-girlfriend in the side of the head, rupturing her eardrum. This what happened the hell? Manziel allegedly dragged her into his car during an argument. As quickly as it began, Manziel's behavior ended his NFL career. The Cleveland Browns stayed with him as long as they could, but this was the last straw. His agent cut ties. On the day of the hearing for the altercation with his girlfriend, Manziel was seen clubbing. He refused his family's pleas to enter into a rehab facility twice. His life was spiraling. His NFL career totals finished with a 2-6 record, 57% completion rate, 1,675 yards, and 7 touchdowns to 7 interceptions with a lone rushing TD. Manziel could never be a great NFL quarterback. He himself said he didn't bring the same drive to the Browns that he brought to Texas A&M. Partying, mental and emotional issues, and lack- Two different worlds also, two different games, college versus NFL. 
of drive slammed the brakes on the Heisman's pro career before it ever really got off the tracks. Now he was fighting to gain control of his life. In the years since Manziel's release from the Browns, he's made runs in and out of football leagues. He joined the Canadian Football League, and before he ever played it down for the Tiger Cats, he was traded to the Montreal Alouettes. Manziel couldn't find the field, and when he did, it was a shell of the original Johnny Football. After a four-interception game, he didn't see the field much more in the CFL. Manziel was banned for life from the league not long after, which isn't a surprise. When looking back on his career, Damn. Manziel has said, I would say we, the Browns, wasted a draft pick to go get this guy who doesn't give a f and that's my only thing in life that I haven't been able to look back and like fully have closure on. It's probably one of the only things that I haven't looked back on and been able to be like super, super okay with what happened. I don't appreciate going to Cleveland for two years and impacting and wasting two years of Joe Thomas's career, who's a guy that's going to be a 12-time Pro Bowler and going to be in the Hall of Fame. And I regret not going and being closer with these guys and being distant into the other life that I was living. Johnny Manziel's story is the perfect example of how talent can only take you so far and how even the brightest of stars can fizzle out the fastest. Oh, man. Unfortunate story there. Gotta stay disciplined. Gotta surround yourself with good people. Gotta really want it. Gotta learn from your mistakes. Gotta be grateful for the opportunities that presents themselves. That was a Johnny Manziel reaction. How bad was he actually? And that looked pretty bad. Uh, I don't think we will be diving deeper into his career. But uh, I see why people talked about him. There was a lot of controversy surrounding him now. Yeah. Thanks for checking out the video. Love you guys.